We begin today with Maya being bad at her job. Maya is my favorite and she has many great qualities, but work ethic really ain't one of them. As Joan walks in, she passes her a birthday gift she got at the on-ramp and LA really is a magical place. Joan enters her office and yells in excitement at the flowers on her desk. The card is from her ex dude, who got back with this girl. She doesn't appreciate the flex and tosses the card, but she does keep all the flowers. Maya wants to know how it's gonna look being the birthday girl and being the only girl at her party that ain't got no man. Joan corrects her grammar and she still doesn't have a man, so maybe worry about your own problems. Maya tells her that she's a ditty and needs to look at what's underneath her nose. Apparently, Joan only knows these three random guys, so she's bound to die alone at this point. We head over to Tony's apartment where she's kicking notable bum Lynn the hell up out of her house. I don't like Lynn if I'm being honest. She dresses like a circus carny at all times, but this is the best outfit she wears in the entire series, so I think she actually sold these clothes from Tony. Tony talks about how she has a new man named Charles. He has stock options and a Porsche. It also happens to be Joan's ex-boyfriend, the toe sucker. Lynn is trying to explain to Tony how terrible of an idea it is, and Tony just ignores her. Lynn tells her that if Tony doesn't tell Joan, she will. Tony thanks her because she wasn't looking forward to that conversation anyways. Back at Joan's office, William stops by to say happy birthday. He asks how old Joan is, and Joan lies and says she's 26. Her inner thoughts explain why she lied. In reality, she's 29 but her life isn't together, so she lies so she'll have a little bit more time. William doesn't believe that at all and asks to see some identification. If she were really 26, she would break his record for becoming the youngest junior partner at this law firm. Maya was ear hustling and runs in asking for a raise, which you gotta respect the hustle. She also lets Joan know that Lynn is waiting on line one for her. Lynn puts Tony on the phone and she has her in a triangle with the scissors ready to snip some hair. Tony, under duress, tells Joan that her date for the party is toe-sucking Charles. Joan harkens back to her time with Charles and he looks like a Michael Jr. White. She gives Charles an ultimatum about how they should get married or just break up right now. He says okay, and she does not respect that choice, obviously, so she starts dirty macking on Tony. Joan tells her that he sucks a mean toe, but he ain't gonna marry you. Joan then says she has her own date and just hangs up. It's time for Joan's birthday party, and she comes out in this dress looking like goddamn and shaped like I need to move on before I start objectifying her during Women's History Month. I remember watching this show as a kid because of how fine everyone was, but I'll stay because it's a funny show. Let me get away from objectification and get back to roasting. Lynn is dressed like she grabbed every article of clothing out of one single grocery bag at random. Lynn never met a dress code she didn't disrespect. She does make a valid point though about Joan needing to stop basing her value on her age. Lynn makes solid points. She just dresses like a birthday clown and I know that beanie smells crazy underneath. William and Charles come in and Joan reveals her real plan to spin around and remind Charles that all this booty could have been his. Jones got more back than a coupon book in that dress. Tracy Ellis Ross, if you see this, please contact me expeditiously. I just want to respect you for Women's History Month. While everyone is gathered around talking, William is trying to get into Jones' dress, but she ain't feeling his micro afro, so she asks to talk to him in the kitchen. Tony attempts to correct Maya's grammar and tells her a sentence needs a verb. Maya's in college, so she knows that. Kiss is a verb and a noun. So she tells Tony to give her ass a kiss and to kiss her ass. Maya overhears William and Joan's conversation about her ex and Maya is mad. Tony walks in trying to yell at Maya because Joan's here and Maya gets in her ass about dating Joan's ex. She explains that having sex with someone is like having sex with everyone they have. In a way, Joan and Tony had sex. Tony says everyone's a consenting adult and Maya calls her nasty. Tony tries to talk crazy about Maya when she walks away and Joan reminds her that Tony is only one escrow and a sugar daddy away from going back to Fresno. I don't think that anybody in the world needs to be humble, but Tony needed to be humbled. Back at the table, Joan is seeing what Charles has been up to and he says he's in a venture capital now. I'm too broke to tell you what that is. He also says he's looking for houses because he's ready to settle down. Joan wants to know how since one short year ago, it was completely out of the question. He just says that it's been a good year. Joan personalizes this and asks if it's because he broke up with her, but he has to remind her that she broke up with him. He didn't want marriage crammed down his throat. She just says that all she wanted was a little intent. Tony decides it's time to leave. She says Joan's tripping and Joan tells her that she 
she's tripping bringing this toe sucker around everyone getting gold bond all on her glasses. The arguments pop off and things are getting very tense. Lynn breaks up the tension and tells everyone to stop the madness. William goes and grabs some cake. Joan's tired of this stuff and kicks everyone out of her house like Martin, but she's not very effective. She just ends up accidentally flashing everyone and running out in embarrassment. Worst birthday ever. We cut to Tony's apartment and Charles is playing with her toes and I'm uncomfortable. Tony is too and won't let him suck Jones and hers. He tells her to go ahead and grab onto that headboard because he's tired of his foot being in his mouth. He wants to have hers. She just can't hurt the only woman in the world that's put up with her. Charles says that if he walks out that door, he ain't coming back. Tony tells him that that's the idea, Mr. Toe Dyson. At Jones' office, she's done being deluded. She tells William that she's 29. He already knew because he bribed someone for that information, but it's good that she's coming to term with these types of things. At Joan's house, she noticed that Lynn is squatting now. Lynn justifies it by saying sophomore year, Joan says she could crash at her house anytime. Lynn has multiple masters, by the way. Lynn invited Tony to come apologize and tells Joan to hear her out. There's a ring at the door knock and it's Charles. He's here to apologize or attempt to smash Tony's best friend 10 minutes after he got kicked out of her apartment. Joan is not trying to hear any of that. She's trying to be a good host so she's gonna grab a drink and she offers one to Charles. He compliments her house and says she has great taste. He lets him know that that's an everything but men. Charles is hurt and ends up revealing that he wasn't ready to commit until he had his career on track. He then starts making out with Joan without asking her and throws her onto the counter. Joan's inner thoughts are conflicted because technically this is Tony's man now. So in her mind, what she's doing is wrong as hell. While he kisses down her body, she stops him because this ain't right. Tony is at the door now and she tells Joan that she broke it off with Charles. Joan's as accepting as possible and she's just trying to hurt hurry Tony the hell up out, but Tony just wants her to be mean to her. Joan would never do what Tony did because she doesn't have one deceitful bone in her body. Out of guilt or maybe uncomfortableness with how close he is to her feet, Joan tells Charles to get up. I'm kind of shocked no one saw him before because he wasn't very hidden. Joan tells Tony she can have him, but Tony doesn't want to risk losing their friendship. Even for a toe-sucking millionaire. Joan is sad for her because that's Tony's dream. Lynn's a freeloader, so she says, hey, let's all go get some food. Charles offers to buy everyone some Chinese. They tell him that they'll meet him there. After he leaves, they plan to go get some Italian. At the restaurant, Maya walks up and Tony halfway apologizes, so that's something. Joan tells her friends that she made Junior partner. Her inner thoughts want to talk about the power of friendship and how her girls had her back, but she's thinking about Charles. She asks everyone if they know where she can get a late night pedicure, but they just call her nasty.